Radio.com. Listen to AM560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560 The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Uh, The uh, Safety Act 2.0, the Pritzker Purge Law, is in effect. Wonder Bar. It is uh, no cash bail in Illinois unless you can convince a judge that somebody presents a threat to the community. The community and the victim, too, right? Uh, You uh, mentioned uh, this uh, attempted murder of a Chicago police officer on Saturday. What just happened? Are we still on the air? I don't know. Oh, is this is this how it ends, dude? Well, it's just um, oh. rolling blackouts now uh, to save the planet. Apparently, we're starting in Elk Grove Village. Um, so this uh, attempted murder of Chicago police officer on Saturday struck with a like a two by four needed uh, thirty stitches to reattach his ear. Yeah. The uh, uh, alleged uh, batterer, yeah, sixty five thousand dollar bond from the judge, so sixty five hundred to get out. Hmm. Interesting. Any bond at all. So that happened this weekend. You also had uh, a eight-year veteran of the L.A. County Sheriff's Office ambushed and killed. Right in front of their sheriff's office. And yeah. he had just gotten engaged, and there was no reason. It was just like somebody did it for the joy of it. Um, Ryan Clinkenbrumer was his name. He was found in medical distress outside the station, taken to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. And then you had this uh, video that's gone viral of a hit and run in Las Vegas. This is a retired police chief. He was the police chief of Bell, California. He's riding his bike in Vegas. These teens steal a car, 17-year-old. And uh, they film themselves uh, going on this rampage. It starts when they knock another car off the road and then they see the cyclist ahead of them this 64 year old retired police chief six in the morning this is his routine he gets up early and bikes and this happened all right go 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 take me moving knocking the car out of their way stop talking bitch Now they see the bicyclist. Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hit his ass. Speeding up. <laughs> oh, <funny. laughs> Just, I mean, I wanted to gouge their eyeballs out when I saw that video. And his helmet went one way, his phone went another way, dead at the scene. Awful. Obviously, these guys didn't know that uh, he was a retired police, but uh, nonetheless, uh, the situation in Big Blue City America that we were talking about before the news. For more on this and uh, other legal matters, please be joined by Cully Stimson, Senior Legal Fellow at the Heritage Foundation, former prosecutor and defense attorney, author of Rogue Prosecutors, How Radical Soros Lawyers Are Destroying America's Communities. Yeah, as we were just talking. Cully, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be with you. So, um, you know, this quote-unquote war on cops that uh, Heather McDonald wrote about, again, I know they it was probably not known the 64-year-old was uh, retired police, but the other cases they certainly did. This war on police that Heather McDonald spoke about is um, still very much a thing in big blue city America where streets have been turned over to repeat violent offenders. Yeah, her book is spot on, and it's still apropos, unfortunately. Of course, you saw the video in the New York Post of this elderly Jewish couple coming home. Yep, the 80-year-old. From a party. Yeah, and uh, a guy dressed up in a ninja outfit comes up with a handgun and executes uh, the elderly gentleman. Uh, And it's not a coincidence that that's in Alvin Bragg's city. Uh, He's a Soros bought and paid for a rogue prosecutor. And yeah, there is a war on cops, but really there's a war on law and order. 
Uh, and the, the, the scourge of this rogue prosecutor movement is real. Uh, 27 of the 30 cities with the highest murder rates um, are blue cities uh, with blue, blue, ma- blue mayors, blue everything. Uh, and 14 of those 30 have Soros bought and paid for rogue prosecutors, which account for 70 percent of the murders in the top 30 uh, murder cities. And so this is a re- these are real numbers. These are real facts. And the irony of this movement is that it's killing the very people they pretend to care the most about, which is black men. Well, how can we uh, fight back? What can we do about it? Well, first, don't vote for <laughs> A Soros bought and paid for a rogue prosecutor. So you see somebody talking about the carceral state or uh, reimagining prosecution or reforming the criminal justice system, which we're all for. But then they start listing about, you know, no cash bail. Look how that worked out for in your city. Uh, Or don't prosecute violent juveniles as adults, which they should be. Uh, Or don't add sentencing enhancements like gun enhancements. These people are against guns because apparently they're bad and awful because these inanimate objects do it themselves. And then when they catch repeat violent offenders who are in possession of a gun, they don't jack them up and send them to prison. So it's all fluff talk, uh, and it's getting people killed. You're seeing stores uh, and big stores close, just leave parts of cities, including your city, which we've wrote, written about recently. I mean, organized crime and shoplifting by these thug groups uh, is a one hundred billion dollar problem over the norm just this year so this is a real problem yeah and um the only way you're getting stores to come back to big cities like this story out of atlanta not uh, sitting too well with some residents of course not the walmart store uh that closed last year is going to reopen but it's going to have an atlanta police department substation inside the store that's the only way they oh, agreed yeah. to reopen. Oh, yeah. I mean, you see the largest uh, mall in downtown San Francisco, Westfield's closing. Uh, why? Because of their employee safety concerns and the fact they're getting robbed blind. Uh, and you see earnings call after earnings call after uh, Zach Smith and I, my co-author of Rogue Prosecutors, wrote in, in Fox News this last week, uh, say, you know what? Shrink, which is a euphemism for theft, is a big problem. Uh, $500 million less in gross profits for one company. Uh, you see in Philadelphia, with has Larry Krasner, the source bought and paid for road prosecutor. Uh, Wawa, which is like a 7-Eleven, right. uh, leaving. They've all left downtown Philadelphia. Uh, your town is a disaster, Chicago. We have a whole chapter dedicated to Kim Fox and how Tony Preckwinkle, uh, the iron fist with the velvet glove, ushered her into office primaried Anita Alvarez, who was a good, normal, law and order Democrat prosecutor. Uh, and then Kim Fox comes in and enacts her pro-criminal, anti-victim, zealotry policies. Uh, you know, in many of these offices like hers, there's 100 percent turnover. Uh, why? Not only do they fire people who are real prosecutors, but people don't want to be a prosecutor if you have to act like a criminal defense attorney. Well, That's and, what's happening. and this is it, too. I mean, the other thing that needs to be driven home is that you have this justice system that is driven by politics, not not the rule of law. So, as you mentioned, uh, we're opposed to guns and we want to get tough on gun crime, except if it's somebody that is part of a protected class that commits a crime with a gun. So when, when uh, trying to combat gun crime runs into trying not to prosecute or incarcerate criminals, then, you know, they have a problem. And, of course, they err on the side of, non-prosecution and decarceration. Yeah, it's not an error. It's a specific plan. Uh, They believe the entire criminal justice system is systemically racist, and the only way to change that is to so-called reverse engineer and fundamentally dismantle the system as we know it. So they just eviscerate the adversarial nature of the system. Look, we need good, hard-charging, creative criminal defense attorneys we need good, hard-charging ethical prosecutors. We need neutral, detached judges. Everyone needs to stay in their lane uh, and do their job. But when you vote in prosecutors who wave their regal wand and refuse to prosecute all misdemeanors, water down felonies to misdemeanors, don't ask for any cash bail, don't add sentencing enhancements, don't send violent criminals who are juveniles to adult court, uh, and don't add, you know, don't do their job you're going to have rising crime rates. And in every single city with a Soros bought and paid for rogue prosecutor, you have rising crime rates. And by the way, 
There's 2,300 DAs who are elected around the country. 74 of them are Soros bought and paid for, which accounts for 68% of the population of this country. And by the way, finally, a real prosecutor in cities like San Diego, they haven't seen a crime spike. Not before COVID, not during COVID, not after COVID. 551 murders in Philadelphia last year, 51 in San Diego. Real prosecutor in San Diego, rogue prosecutor in Philadelphia. And they're tied for the seventh largest cities in the country. You do the math. Well, the other thing that happens, too, is uh, we are men- as you mentioned in Illinois, but with the uh, Prisker Purge Law. So you institutionalize what's happening in your big urban center statewide. So even if you don't have Soros prosecutors, you tie the hands of real prosecutors. So one of the leading opponents of the Pritzker Purge Law has been a, a suburban prosecutor named Jim Glasgow, who's a Democrat. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yep. Uh, he's the one who led the suit against uh, the against it to, uh, to argue that it was unconstitutional. Anyway, um, you know, you're tying his hands, as he described in painstaking detail, detail for months leading up to last year's gubernatorial election here and the legislative elections here. And so artificial timelines on how long uh, you can hold someone in pretrial detention, even if you can get past a judge to hold them in pretrial detention before uh, you must bring them to trial or release them on pretrial, uh, release them pending trial. Um, These things are going to result in more people who are accused of serious violent offenses, often not for the first time, being on the streets. And as we've seen in Chicago and Cook County, um, when that happens, you have a lot of additional crimes that are committed and victims that pile up, all of which could have been prevented had you been able to uh, keep uh, repeat violent offenders in pretrial detention. So it, it seems to me that this what we're going to be watching and seeing, and it's, a, it's sort of a macabre business, but we don't have a choice, it's the law here, is... How, how long it takes for what Cook County did to itself to come to the collar counties and how much punishment suburbanites around the country are willing to take when laws like this are enacted statewide so that uh, the big city drives the sort of uh, culture in their communities as well and how long their those residents will tolerate it. All excellent points. Uh, it's a double whammy. You have legislatures who are out of their mind uh, who simply don't live in the world of reality that prosecutors do. I mean, uh, look at New York. New York passed a similar dumb law. Uh, they don't let judges. It's the only state, by the way, in the country that doesn't let a judge take into consideration the dangerousness of the person in front of them who is charged with a violent crime. So they can't look at their rap sheet. I mean, what are they supposed to look at? Their shoes? Their haircut? I mean, it's just retarded. Mm-hmm. It's really stupid. Uh, and, you know, there are great Democrat elected DAs. They're law and order folks. This is not a blue or red state thing. This is not blue versus red or Republican versus Democrat or liberal versus conservative. This is law and order versus chaos. And that's the way our book is pitched. It features eight cities with eight particular rogue prosecutors. There's a whole chapter on Kim Fox. It starts with real crime stories that would not have happened but for these rogue policies. And one final point, and that is we had the uh, chief of police union chief in D.C. come to Heritage Foundation, where I work, to do a public panel on violent crime in D.C. And he said the way you could cut crime by 90 percent day one is if you find a felon in possession of a handgun, instead of taking them to the local court, the superior court, you take them to federal court, where I was a prosecutor and charge him with 18 U.S.C. 922G, which is ex-felon in possession, that's a five-year mandatory minimum. Same is true in Chicago. I have friends in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago. I have friends in the DA's office in Chicago. If every person who's an ex-felon, who's a felon, who's caught in possession of a handgun, and that's a lot of them, got sent to federal district court and charged 922G, and that's a slam dunk case, you would cut down crime immensely day one. Yeah, They're but, not willing to do it. Well, right, because uh, that would require uh, Biden giving Garland the okay to okay that, and that's not going to happen because that runs afoul of this infrastructure that we're talking about and these financiers and just basically the ideology of this revolutionary party they're a part of. Well, look, I mean, there's a book out there by Angela Davis. Don't buy it, uh, but it's called Are Prisons Obsolete? Her answer is yes. 
normal everyday Americans is no. Uh, and they believe, and this is we talk about it extensively in our book, we quote them. They believe that sending people to prison today is the equivalent of sending somebody back to quote the plantation, unquote. Those are their words, not mine. And so they're not they're they are there's an anti prison there's a prison abolitionist movement. And the prisonist abolitionist abolitionist movement is is what's driving this rogue prosecutor movement. And it's sick, it's disgusting, it's bizarre, but it's real. And we expose it for everything it's worth in our book, Rogue Prosecutors, and people need to pick it up and read it because they need to wake up because your public safety privilege depends on who your DA is, period. Cully Simpson, Senior Legal Fellow at Heritage Foundation, former prosecutor and defense attorney. The book, as he's been mentioning, Rogue Prosecutors, How Radical Soros Lawyers Are Destroying America's Communities. Cully Simpson, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you, and he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. It's like a hot, steaming cup of information to start your day. It's Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Tell me why Relief Factor is so successful at lowering or eliminating pain. I'm often asked that question, and the owners of Relief Factor tell me they believe our bodies were designed to heal. That's right, designed to heal, and I agree with them. The doctors who formulated Relief Factor selected the four best ingredients, yes, 100% drug-free ingredients, each helping your body deal with inflammation. Each of the four ingredients deals with inflammation from a different metabolic pathway. That's right there, approaching from four different angles. Maybe why so many people find such 